Hey guys and gals, Vlad here with AVT Astro. Today we are talking about planetary EAA. For those of you that might not be familiar, I run a little astro blog called avt-astro.com and of course this YouTube channel. So if you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. Over the last 25 years, I've had the privilege of owning over 100 scopes and more accessories than I could count. Having said all that, let's get down to the topic of this video. And at this point, for those of you that might have not watched my channel, you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. like what is this thing that you're standing by? Well, if you're not familiar, this is a 16 inch meter RCX 16 inch that I'm currently working on. Link is in the top uh, above to uh, kind of get into the video series about this guy. Alrighty guys, so just real briefly, uh, with planetary observing, whether it's visually observing or doing EAA, which is electronically assisted astronomy, is what that stands for. Um, basically, um, I just want to kind of, kind of cover a couple of you know basics. The primary thing that really, really matters is the scene conditions that you have. So if the air is really steady, you're going to get good images no matter what telescope you're using. Uh, the other thing is that if the, assuming that the scene is cooperating in that particular night, or if you live in a area especially of good scene you know having a larger telescope is really beneficial Alrighty, guys welcome outside so telescope wise we are running the mead 12 inch advanced coma free sct focal length is around 3000 millimeters and as you can see software wise we are running none other but shark cap uh, so sharp cap guys super cool program um i'll have a link in the description um i've talked about it in my previous ea videos um Love it. Uh, but anyhow, so before we get into the program too much, uh, as you can see here, uh, the first order of business is that we're looking at Venus and I'm focusing just manually, kind of, you know, eyeballing, you know, kind of like a good focus for the planet, basically. Um, overall, uh, so when I was doing this, I already did have the exposure and the gain setting set uh, for the camera. Those are kind of in the uh, middle there on the right hand side. Uh, so the exposure is basically, you know, how long of an exposure the you know camera takes and gain is how sensitive the sensor is. So you, you adjust both of those to kind of get the planet to where, you know, it basically will look good and show the maximum amount of details. All right, so um, as you can see here, here I'm switching over. So my telescope, uh, before I was using the manual focuser, this uh, it's also affixed with a uh, digital uh, focuser or like electronic focuser, I guess I should say. And now I am going to uh, start the stack. Uh, so basically what that does is it'll just kind of, you know, take one exposure after another and, you know, kind of combine the images to hopefully give you a better image. With uh, Venus, you know, as the particular example, there's really not too much uh, or any surface detail ever visible on uh, on Venus because it's always covered with very thick uh, clouds. So anyhow, the final image is this. Okay, now over to Jupiter. Uh, so uh, as you can see, Jupiter's kind of out of focus there. I am going to be, you know, doing the same type of focus and thin on Jupiter. And this is just manual focusing that I'm doing on Jupiter here with the standard SCT focuser. Um, and as you can see, so Jupiter is a little bright, so I'm adjusting the uh, exposure there to kind of, you know, get it to where you can kind of see the belts of Jupiter and kind of, you know, uh, be able to see enough detail so that you could proceed further with the better focus on the planet. Now, Sharkab does have, uh, you know, focusing adjustment uh, tools that will help you, you know, reach a more precise focus. Uh, so this is like that last setting, you know, the focuser setting, I, I forget what the name of it is, um, basically. And essentially what that does is, you know, kind of monitor the details on the surface of, uh, you know, the planet in this case. And then basically you're trying to maximize the value that's kind of, you know, where it says like now and best. Um, and that will give you the sharpest details. All right. And so here we're starting the life stack on uh, Jupiter, as you can see. So basically, you know, I'm selecting the area of interest there. And that's the where the program is going to use to, you know, stack on um, uh, on, you know, on, on this particular planet on Jupiter. So pretty cool. You can adjust these uh, dials here and that's basically the amount of sharpening, you know, that uh, the 
software does to your stack. Uh, there's different levels of it. So anyhow, you could kind of play around with those settings uh, there as well. And then of course, you know, here you could see that you could adjust the saturation and the different color balances of the image uh, as well of course as the brightness lastly you can hit the uh, auto you know adjust button here and that kind of adjusts the image for you pretty nicely i find that it actually works you know very well to uh, get you you know a good uh looking image although most of the time i do end up tweaking the settings a little bit myself you know kind of to my liking but you know i think this is more of a personal preference than anything else quite frankly Alrighty, guys and as uh, you know i'm kind of resetting the stack here on jupiter you know i did, did just want to say so um this is currently usually what i do on the plants if i do want to get a planetary capture i'm not like a really you know big guy on capturing uh you know planets uh i you know i kind of prefer to visually observe them uh the way that i used to do it is you know you do a capture with either sharp cap or whatever you know software that you you know you kind of like and then you'd use a uh, software called auto stacker and i'll have the that you know software in the description uh, probably does give you more options honestly i personally never really learned all the different settings and options and that type of deal uh, but i do feel that uh, sharp cap does give you very very good you know results for the very little effort that you really need to put into um, you know getting an image of the planets alrighty guys and here's the last example that i've got for you mars was essentially at opposition at the making of this video uh, so here I'm doing a stack on Mars, uh, you know, same type of procedure as I did on the last two planets. Uh, but really cool to see some surface details and the polar ice cap as well. Uh, and, and then here's uh, the final result. Alrighty guys, welcome back. Hopefully you guys enjoyed those examples of, you know, capturing the planets. Uh, like I said in the intro, uh, seeing is like by far the most important thing followed, you know, closely by, uh, by you know, like a good quality telescope uh, and the aperture does really help, assuming that the scene is really good. Uh, but anyhow, if you haven't checked it out, I encourage you to download SharpCap, you know, and um, check it out that way. Again, if you want to kind of do it the, the old school way, uh, which is probably still more, you know, kind of like powerful, like if you kind of want to explore all the options out it, you can do a capture with whatever, you know, software your camera uses or with SharpCap as well, and then stack the images in, in AutoStack or some other stacking software, and do processing Photoshop, which now I haven't said all that, that sounds hard, which is usually why I do not do that. So anyhow, thank you guys for watching. If you guys have any questions, comments, or anything like that, please leave them in the thing below. If you're not subscribed, again, please do consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.